in Germany, you know. And you know what these elders were saying? If we are capable of uh, waging a good democratic struggle, what it means is the people will be able to identify with the struggle and in the end be able to recognize not only us, but the families that suffer because of the strugglers. That is what we expected. That even after Jomo Kenyatta has jailed us, after Moy has detained and jailed us, the people of the Republic of Kenya, as a society we thought that was learning, would actually refuse to have us isolated, excluded and forgotten. But what is it that the people of Kenya did? They elected into office the same people, agents and relatives of the characters that were torturing us in prisons. And so, when these people went into government, they decided the first thing to do is to ignore anybody who was involved in the struggle, whether it was in the Freedom War of 1950s or in the reintroduction of multipartism from 1966, when Jeremiah Ondinga started that war. To this day, you cannot get into any government office and see any of the children or the remnants of the multipartism and the freedom war in any government office until and unless somebody is pretending, for example, to give Dead and Kimadi a small little gift of having a statue in Nairobi, you know, a statue that was constructed by, I think, Jomo Kenyatta, Jomo Kenyatta University, or is it J. Quart? One of the two. Or having to buy a Datsun car. A small little that's and car and give it to Kemadi's, Kemadi's, Kemadi's wife. You know what you are talking about is for some people to spend money to buy a Datsun or Toyota 1200 or 1500 is like buying a Mandazi in Kenyatta market. And so it is really nothing that uh, anybody can be proud of. And then the next thing is that when you go crying all over the place because you killed JM or JM was killed, then they look at what is it that can assist at least the remnant wife or wives or children to see that the government is concerned. That is what we did not expect. What we expected is this. Those people that went through struggle torture, those people that were excluded because of what it is that we were fighting for, that the government would have identified them and said, look, this is what we should do to resuscitate and reinstate these people in society. They did not do it. Even when we fought, we fought about the Freedom Corner, even when we fought about uh, the Garden Square and the Heroes Corner, what happened is that they went to State House and started thinking about how they should overshadow the wishes and aspirations of the freedom and the multi-party strugglers to put up their own structures instead of what it is that the people wanted to have. That you can have four to five restaurants in the Freedom Square, you know, on Rangata Road. Or you can have the Uhuru Park encroached and uh, surrounded so that the people don't enjoy it and use it during the election period. And we know that is the tactics of Kenya, that uh, let us not give them space. And therefore, what do I say? A nation that does not respect its heroes, not Katango, a nation that does not respect its heroes is done, completely done. It is cast even by the universe and by God. And you see the reason why I'm disappointed about Raila? Something very simple. According to the Kenyans, they see Raila as one of the freedom fighters. Fantastic. But would Raila stand up today and say that he stands for those freedoms and rights? Would Raila stand up here today in this country and say that he is actually pursuing the liberties cause that we had started in the 60s and now? Or would he actually say he is diluting them because he is joining with perpetrators and the oppressors of this nation? According to me, it is a Raira question to answer, not me. But I can tell you freely that we are extremely disappointed with him because 
Nobody has told him not to work with the government as long as he's working for the economy, the well-being and the welfare of the people. Nobody stops him from doing that. But he cannot be the witness to see so much money embezzled and he says nothing about it. Today, we have been going through fuel shortage. Where was that fuel? In the Indian Ocean? In Iran? In Russia? Where was the fuel? The fuel was in Kenya. But the fuel in Kenya was not given to the people. The fuel in Kenya was given to a few stations or oil companies to benefit so that Kenya is continuing to wobble in problems about lack of fuel. Yet, Raira was a minister for energy one time. He knows the systems of fuel and oil. He knows because he is also in the same industry doing things to do with gas cylinders and so forth. He understands. And then he has got oil companies himself. We have got Ruto, who also is involved in these things. And we have got Uhuru, centrally involved. In fact, what I am saying is this, Raila, you are benefiting because of your presence in that group, because you know that we are here and we are disappointed just like Kenya is because you are contributing to the creation of hopelessness in this country. And that is why we are saying, we think that the three of you are a mess and Kenyans need to take a census through the August vote so that those that want reinstatement of their hopes elect for the city. And those that are against development and economic growth then to elect you because you have messed us and you can only continue to mess us more. So with your disappointment witness change of curriculum meaning there is no generation that discusses with the other generation in congruence of education. Never. Mm -hmm. They are all scattered and therefore for us we have lost to, 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 to those fellows. Next thing is about health. Health. <coughs> I dare say this. When we are talking about the national security, Brother David, security has got three branches. One of them is about the food security. That uh, a human person requires a nutritious program. Nutrition so that we can avoid weaknesses of the body. Mm -hmm. If we do not have good nutrition, all it means is our bodies will be attacked by very small little things. Get weak and therefore we are in clinics, health clinics, permanently. Now, when a country has got a good nutrition program, you do not need hospitals like you are talking about small little shops and markets you know, for dollars. You establish few hospitals well equipped with professional doctors that are going to be attending to rare cases that actually develop because nutrition was correct. What about in this country? In this country, first of all, nobody talks about food. The government does not talk about food. They don't care. In fact, most of our food is exported to other nations or shared with other nations and we continue to import from other areas as our farmers will you know, suffer in, 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 in poverty. You can look at maize, look at beans, look at anything that we grow, you know, and you will see most of it is rotting elsewhere because the government does not care. What about our rice? Today, you go to supermarkets in this country, you are going to get what they call plastic rice from China, from Pakistan, those areas. And nobody tells us how plastic rice looks at. And most of these are introduced through GMO programs to Africa simply to weaken the body systems. And therefore, if a government is not careful, even if they are going to talk mafuta pekeake, talking like angels about how they are going to create a nation, without food security, their societies are simply done. Mm -hmm. Number three, or number two, if you do not have, if you do not have a good health program, 
then you become fodder to your neighbors. Just listen. If you're going to have the El Shabab attacking Kenya at any given point, and it means people are sleeping but drunk, because Kenya is a drunken nation. You know, why are they drunk? If you are hungry for two days, you have not eaten, you are not expecting any food anywhere, majority of our people run to beer. Because with beer, you can drink it and maybe sleep on a trench or anywhere else. You don't care. Because of poverty, because of lack of commitment to a lot of things, because of lack of jobs, Kenyans simply will. And therefore, if you do not have all th those two, then the next thing you must have is a very strong defense system. You must have a very, very trained home security. You must have a very well trained defense system, Kenya Air Force, Kenya Army, Kenya, Kenya Navy, so that they can look at our borders. Because with kind of hunger, lack of health, anybody will attack you and go. And in fact, if you look at Sudan neighbors, and Ethiopia neighbors. When we are attacked, Kenyans are not able to defend themselves. The pharaohs come take their flocks, their animals, and simply disappear. Why? Because our people are not fed. Our people are not secured. Because even the armed forces is not present. The home security is not present. Kenya has become simply a careless nation that sleeps in Nairobi and doesn't care about the border countries. And therefore, what I am saying is this, that is an issue that must be discussed. That is an issue that is a national crisis today. And there is none of them, none of them is talking about it because they participate in uh, stock thefts, export the animals, bring them sometimes to, 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 to KMC through dubious transport, and they make money out of it. So you're, talk, you're talking about security. Time. We do not promise them allowances adequate enough to secure us. And the armed forces will be out there doing nothing because they have not been considered. And I'm saying, if you want a good committed force, whether it is the police or the defense, the country should pay, not give the office of the president money to squander. In, in the name of defense systems. It is actually that money should go to the pockets of the armed forces and the police and the bomb security throughout. In fact, what I think now is that uh, during the election period, that is from now to the end of September, the armed forces and the police should be given not less than 20% increment to take care of the fatigue allowance that they are going to go through this because the country is hopeless and the neighbors know how hopeless we are you know and we would want to make sure that nobody gets tempted to contribute to thuggery because of despair and hopelessness the next thing that uh, we think about is about youth youth you cannot talk about youth in this country and only talk about sports running and football and what have you. That is engagement for entertainment, entertaining the body, physically preparing yourselves, not to prepare the youth for future. Because after they are 40 years, they retire from sports. And when they retire from sports, they are supposed to be doing something. What is it as a country we have done to prepare them for that? Nothing. We leave them to their whims, make decisions about what they are going to do with the money that they have earned through sports. If they were not lucky to make money through those sports, then they are actually condemned to square that. What I'm saying is this. Every time you think about your young people, you are thinking about talent identification that you must know from the beginning that this young person has got A, B, C talents. How does the government make sure that that talent is supported in this young person? How is this talent going to assist him? Not necessarily playing football, mm -hmm. but also you can look at a child and see that he is extremely scientific. Mm -hmm. How do you assist that child? What is it that we have seen? 
Where is the special bread? Where is our intelligence? Why would we have these people loitering in the streets and in hotels and in the banks of this republic, transferring our monies, and we have got an intelligent system? You know, while the intelligence I know, they know what is happening, but do they fear the system? Do they fear their leaders? Or what makes it this way? How do that you address the bread? One time, bro, one time, Kenya was saying to be second to Scotland. You know, that there is no crime that was committed in Kenya without a Kenyan intelligence officer discovering it. Why is it that we are losing money from all the banks, you know, and we have got intelligence officers here? Why is it that uh, Kenya itself is bringing in every criminal in this country, whether they entered through the borders or they came by aircraft or they came by ship, surely at every port we are supposed to discover who is coming here wrongly so that we do not bring people. I am saying even the defense system has got intelligence. Mm. You know, the Ministry of Defense and the three services have their own intelligence. You know, they know who enters where. They know which aircraft is getting in where. They can see the ships that are coming here. They can see the ship leaving the ports of Lama and Mombasa and Waterview. They can actually see the ships that are in the, in the deep seas coming or fishing and Waterview. Yet you see most of the ships that are used as fish boats come to Mombasa. Slightly a few kilometers from our 200 miles, and they fish, process, and uh, bring the fish back to Kenya. And you think the fish is from Italy, the fish is from Brazil, the fish is from India, yet it's our fish. Listen, and we have got a defense system. That is what I'm saying. Where is our intelligent patrols? That is the problem we have. Then the next point that I wanted to talk about, David, mm -hmm. is about minorities and the excluded. We have got a lot of excluded groups in this country. We have got a lot of minorities in this country. And we have got a lot of marginalized in this country. Nobody cares about them. In fact, yesterday I was reflecting with a friend of mine to tell him, if you look at the borders, you will see where marginalization is concentrated. Because you look at Korea, you look at Luyas, you look at Luos, you look at Pokot, you look at, uh, look at them, you know, and you are going to, to the Turkanas, you look at the Somalis, you look at those bordering the seas, and you see something interesting, that the people that are within government does not care, do not care about those that are in those borders. They only care about those who are at the center, and those at the center are the people in charge of the economy, are the people in charge of politics, they are in charge of social development. Those in the borders are totally excluded. If you ask a Kenyan whether they have met an El Molo in this country, one of the ethnic groups in this country, they will tell you they have never seen one. If you ask the reason why Somalis are 100% complaining and you go to Mandera, you go to Wajir, you go to some parts of Garissa, they are, or you go to some parts of Tana River, they are telling you that they do not know whether it is Jomo Kenyatta who is still ruling Kenya or is there another one. That means there is some backwardness because they have been denied information. And now the question is, why is it that we deny our people information? Because you cannot be able to rule a people who are simply backward, primitive, illiterate, and lack everything knowledge, and you expect that you are leading a nation. You are not leading a nation. You are leading your family. Because the nation belongs there. If you look at the eight communities, I think there are eight or nine, eight or nine communities that are the border, and multiply by their numbers, you will see they are more than the central or the central the central communities of Kenya. You know, and I'm talking this way. I've conducted research myself in Migori, for example, and you will see that the majority of the people in Korea would want to visit Tanzania because they think Tanzanians are better treated than us. Why? Because Korea is in both. 
it is in both the Korea, and our the Korea, and the other side. You know, the Masa is here. They are very proud when they are associated with the Masa is of Arusha and Tanzania because they think they are better than us. If you look at the lawyers, because the lawyers are actually more than listen, lawyers are seven million in Kenya. Those seven million Kenyans look at Uganda, how Ugandans are treated, and they are always asking, why is it that Kenya cannot do it? Now, you cannot do it because the politicians by the Truth Commission. Why? There must be something that they fear. What is it they fear? And the Kenyans are saying this. We know we have got people and families in this country that own as much as two million acres. When Kenyans are suffering, suffering, suffering. It is actually important for each one of us to remember that to maintain peace in a nation is not to postpone discussions. You know, you may postpone yourself now. You may postpone this issue now. But one or so generation to come, it will be revived, but very bitterly. I recommend that we address this issue now, before who goes, and if he feels shy about it, then I would say, then you are leaving it to the judgment of the next generation, and the next generation may never ever remember that you wanted something good for this nation, and you will be giving your country and your family up for a lot of pain. I want to go to the next issue that I am calling. So, meaning that uh, without arms, Kenyans are dying. Without fighting, Kenyans are dying. Either they are dying of uh, hunger, Kenyans. Kenyans are dying because of malaria, Kenyans. Kenyans are dying because even of polio. Kenyans are dying because of small little things that have been conquered in the world and which our country has not been addressing. Now they are addressing about HIV and AIDS right now. And they are debating it because of the money they think is going to be allocated. And the organization that is going to be distributing or receiving this money. What it means is that Kenya is actually looking at money and not the solutions. You know, if we are going to look at the solutions, then we shall be able to address hunger, we shall be able to address disease, and we shall be able to address the remedies, including establishment of vaccination and vaccine creations. And uh, that one is going to address a lot. We know that the mountain malaria, for example, or the Highlands malaria was introduced in Kenya in 1974 by our enemies. They arrested mosquitoes in Kenya, went out to laboratories and cloned them and brought them down here with the irresistible strength that they could even live in cold lands. Have the Minister of Health, various of them, addressed this. And uh, if they have, they should tell us whether they have got solutions that we Kenyans have been waiting for. And then in the end, and lastly, is that uh, insecurity of our land is uh, enhanced, is made worse by the Kenyan authority laxity that you have in this country the people that have taken over businesses, hotels, and petrol stations, people who do not qualify. Why not qualify? Because all of them are foreigners. If today some communities from across Africa decided that Kenya was going to be locked completely, they would do that because of fuel. They are the owners now of petrol stations. If they decided they are going to poison Kenyans, they would do it because they have taken over the hotel industry in this country. If Kenyans were going to be at the mercy of foreigners, the fish that we eat is not Kenyan. It's not from Kisumu. It is not from, uh, from, from, from Indian Ocean. It's not from Naifasha. It is not even from the interland ports. It is 
a fish that is important here. Foreigners can, can vanquish this nation completely. And therefore, we are not secure. Look at the things that are allowed. That. Look at this things that are brought to this nation. Some of them raised with drugs. Some of them raised with, uh, with poisons. And yet we do not care about it. So you find containers cleared in Mombasa, having things that you do not know, to people that are not recognized. And they are all in Kenya. Kenya today has got more small arms than countries that have got war. What are these small arms for? Why is it that you go to places that you can buy a small arm at 2,000 shillings, or you buy it at 1,000 more? A pistol, an automatic gun, and they are here. What is it are we doing? You go to some communities in this country, in the rural areas, and you cannot compare their ammunition with that of police. They are more armed than the police. Yet we think we are secure in this country. I pray that Kenyans can be able to make a decision now that time has come when hypocrisy and pretense must be fought and kicked out of the window and door so that this country can be hopeful, so that we can kill despair and ask you in our own way that be considered because we think we are competent to run the affairs of Kenya and reinstate this society to the expectations of our great forefathers who fought to have the Mzungus out by 1963. And we believe 1992 was the first generation complete and uh, 2022 is the second generation complete. We must change over. Thank you. I'm sure that we have got people that have campaigned from the one go for 10 years that uh, they have never left the street, they have never left the office, they are always talking about, I am going to be president. Mm -hmm. Let Kenyans remember this, that Kiswahili, and we own Kiswahili, Tanzania and Kenya own Kiswahili. One of the phrases and uh, sayings by Waswahili of Kenya and Tanzania is this, Chema Chanjiuza. Chema Chanjiuza. Kibaya Unjitebeza. And I want to give the meaning of this. That a bad item in the market, a bad item in the market, unsellable, unbuyable, can only be able to be present in the eye and ear and therefore the brain of every potential buyer. Why? Sababu ni kibaya sana, hakuna mtu anataka kukinunua, ni lazima kitembe, kila pahali kikisema kwamba ni mimi. Kizuri, chanji uza that a good item is seen from afar. It doesn't have to walk around. A good bull, a good goat, a good item, a good banana, a good stock, says it all from what you see on it and in it. And it attracts buyers internationally. And therefore, that point becomes a tourist center where the item is becomes a tourist center because everybody is coming there. Lakini Kibaya cannot create a center because it is moving everywhere selling itself. What I am saying is this. Oh, then that is very interesting for Kenyans to note that Jomo Kenyatta, that is Kenyatta 1, organized a system in such a way that he was going to be inherited by his own creature called Daniel Torrey, teacher of Moy. He made him. He took an oath in 1971. They tested the waters about his popularity in 1976 by trying to change the constitution. And they went out of, 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 of state house to make sure that Moy's name was in every household by proposing that Katiba be changed 
so that Moi is not elected. And so the country was given an opportunity to deliberate and discuss Moi. And it was discussed every second, you know, in Kenya. And in the end, Jomo Kenyatta himself called the elders of the Kikuyus and said, listen, you have to stop it. We do not want that nonsense again. You know, kind of bollocking them for things that he had started himself. And when they withdrew, then Kenyatta had a small little meeting in Gatondo uh, to say that Moi is the one that was going to succeed him. Finished. Now, that Moi is the one that made sure that Uhuru Kenyatta is the president of Kenya. How did he do it? He disappointed all the leaders within Kanu in a public meeting in Kasarani by dismissing them as people that are incompetent, foolish and stupid. And he said the only character that was capable of doing this was Uhuru Kenyatta. And you know what happened after that. I am saying this because these are part of our discussions in the last two and a half years. And what is Uhuru doing now? Uhuru is doing something very simple. He's been trying to bring Gideon in and it has been very difficult because you see he wants to repay the debt that has already been created by Moi to have Gideon in this system. Now, then uh, he has a problem because he doesn't know how to do it and the only way to do it is look for a person that Kenya appeared or appears maybe most likely to support and that character is Raida Ondinga who led very successful demonstrations after the elections which threatened the government of the Republic of Kenya and which Uhuru is engine on to tell Kenyans that if you can demonstrate us by Raida to do it why don't you support us because you are asked by Raida to do that ah then what is it that we are doing here? We are simply trying to look for a protector, a defender, who will defend Uhuru Kenyatta after retirement on the 9th of August 2022. And what is it that we are saying as Fondasi? We have looked at this. We have looked at the relationship between Fondasi, Uhuru Kenyatta and Kanu and, uh, and uh, Raira and uh, Ruto, and this is what we have seen. We have seen that uh, all these gentlemen and ladies coerced around Uhuru and around Ruto are one and the same people. All they are trying to do is to surround the sack of power so that there is nobody else enters other than those that have been coached Read and brought up by Daniel to teach Arab Moyo. People who have messed our politics, people who have messed our economy, and people who have affected our social life. For there is no family in Kenya that is not complaining. There is no child in Kenya that has got hope. Everybody in this country has lost hope, and we are saying this. The only way we can be able to reinstate hope, the only way we can be able to reconstruct our economy, the only way we are able to look at Kenya in a satisfactory manner is in fact to look at what has gone wrong in our politics and in our economy so that it can be reconstructed and enriched. With the characters that we have in this political arrangement, it is not possible. And therefore, to celebrate 20, 30 years of uh, multipartism in Kenya, we looked at it and we saw that all the political parties which may have been involved in the celebrating of multipartism and giving Kenya alternative leadership have in the last two months been consumed into UDA and or their Zimio alliances. Meaning that Kenya has lost